So this passage that we just read was after the resurrection, Jesus is giving his final, what we call the great commission to his disciples, his last words to them before he goes up to heaven. And this same scene is captured in the book of Acts. And it's worded a little bit differently, but it's talking about the same thing. And it says in Acts, it says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And when we, we hear this, it's a very, common, a very common passage, right? It's the Great Commission. It's the one the church has been called to send out. And I feel like with common passages, we often just feel like we know them so well that we don't really think them through. But when Jesus was talking to his disciples here, and he was talking about Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, if he was here talking to us, he might have said, you'll be my witnesses in Santa Barbara, in Santa Barbara County, in California, and then to the ends of the earth. He's talking about where they were and then going out from there, how far they were going to be his witnesses. And if we're going to follow this call, if we're going to follow this command, if we're going to be Christ's witnesses anywhere outside the walls of this beautiful building, then we have to actually do something first. There is action involved. And in this account, when we're reading Jesus saying, telling us to go, he's actually assuming that we're already on our way, that we're already going. That passage in verse 19, where it says, therefore go, in the Greek, it's actually therefore having gone. It's like you're, you're already going, since you're going already, then disciple, because you're already on your way of being my witnesses. It's not really an option that we have as Christ followers. It's like because we're Christ followers, Jesus is assuming that this is what we're doing already because this is what he has, us, has for us. And he's taking for granted the way that it's phrased that we're already on our way. So he's saying, since you're going on your way, make disciples. Since you're already following and being my witness, also make disciples. And if we're going to live in that kind of a mindset, we have to be willing to wake up each morning being ready for whatever it is that God is calling us to. Go into each situation that life has for us, whether it's work or school or hanging out with our friends, expecting that God has called us for a purpose to do something in particular. And I don't know about you, but when I wake up in the morning, that's not always the first thing on my mind. First thing on my mind is, I get the kids up, got to get to work, got to do this. I'm I'm not thinking about how is God going to use me today and how am I fulfilling that call in my life? But imagine how different it would be if I did do that right? To focus on where God is calling me, being ready and willing. And we are called to go, whether it be in our town or our county or our state or to the remotest place, the furthest ends of the earth from us. In the last three years, I guess it's almost four years now since the pandemic, we've noticed in the mission world, we've noticed a bit of a shift in our focus because of the pandemic. I mean, when it first happened, we weren't able to go anywhere, right? We were grounded. We had to be in our houses. We couldn't go to the ends of the earth. And then when things started opening up, it was really difficult. As impact, we had a hard time sending teams. We didn't in 2021 because there were so many restrictions and it was, we're going to get stuck there because we didn't have this done. And what if this happened? And it was just so difficult. It was so hard to go outside our community. And because of that, the church really stepped up to the plate and local missions has boomed. I work with churches all over Southern California and their investment in local missions over the last four years has exploded. And it's amazing what God is doing in churches through these communities. But what has also happened as a result of that is people and churches have a lot pulled back from international missions because they were forced to at first, and then they just haven't gotten back into it. And, you know, they, it's both, I've seen both churches pulling back from going to international mission partners and from supporting financially international mission partners. And in the first couple of years, I heard a lot of, well, you know, we're really trying to focus on our own backyard here. We don't have the, the resources to, to focus outward. Or we're really having a hard time with the numbers in our own church. So we really can't focus on going out and doing that any internationally or far away. 
And I mean, don't get me wrong, local is incredibly good and it's necessary. It is part of that call. But Jesus didn't say that you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and if you want to, to the uttermost parts of the earth. He didn't say, you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and if you're comfortable with it, also to the ends of the earth. These four areas that were called in our immediate community and the further out, further out, and the the ends of the earth, those areas are linked. We can't just do missions in our own context, in our own community, and we can't just go and do international missions. The local missions is an important and integral part of the church being the church in the community, being Christ's hands and feet. We are not the church without local missions. And international missions is a part of the church being the church on a global scale. And the global church is separated without that. When we cross borders, when we cross cultural lines in the name of missions, it initiates relationships where the church is nourished, kind of like a a spiritual umbilical cord, passing spiritual learnings and support from here to there and there to here. Picture in your mind for a second the last big thing that happened here that really affected the community kind of in a negative way. Like maybe it was as far back as the floods and the Thomas fires, or maybe there's something else that has happened more recently. Picture that in your mind Think about it. In that moment of crisis, what were you doing? What were you thinking? Who were you checking up on? What, were, what kind of feelings were going through you in that moment? Think about that in your head. Now think about the last crisis or tragic thing that you heard on the news that was further away from here. Maybe it was the war in Ukraine. Maybe it's the refugee crisis in another country. Are those feelings different when you think about that thing that happened here and that thing that you heard on the news? Is there something inside you that feels different when you think about that? Yes, right? That naturally there is. Why do we have such a more intense feeling about that tragedy or crisis that happened here in Santa Barbara, why is it more intense than what we heard about on the news? This was terrible and heartbreaking also. But the difference is, is you were worried and concerned about people you love and care about, and it was affecting people you love and care about here. And that's the difference. It's relationships. When we follow Christ's call to go, and be witnesses to the end of the earth, we are being a part of a larger body of Christ. When I hear about crises happening at the border and people fleeing their homes and their countries from Central America and crossing the border and doing all of the things that's creating all the crisis, that touches me in a different way than my friend that has never been to Honduras. Because I have been, I've been to Honduras so many times that I have friends and they feel like family there. But for somebody who's never come in contact with somebody from one of those countries, it feels different. It's not wrong, but you don't have that relationship. And so your heart is not touched in the same way. Whenever we go to places like Honduras, like Turkey, Ukraine, we always hear people telling the team, thank you for coming. Thank you for remembering us. Thank you for taking the time off of your work or your school or your regular life to come and and be with us. That's huge for them. When we take this call seriously to go and make disciples, when we live our lives in the posture of saying yes to this call, the possibilities of how Christ can use us are, are endless. Back in 1995, a woman named Nita Hansen went on an impact trip to the Philippines. And that trip woke within her a desire to answer the call to witness for Christ in the faraway places. 
And soon after that, she returned to Ukraine, or she went to Ukraine on another short-term trip, and her heart was broken for the least of these and the marginalized in Ukraine. And she started a ministry that I'm sure that most of you know about that it's called God's Hidden Treasures. And for the last 23 years, maybe 25 at this point, she has been ministering to the least of these in Ukraine. And her ministry has expanded to now with the war, they are opening clinics and helping people who are refugees, internally displaced people. They are touching thousands and thousands of lives in Ukraine because Nita heard that call to be Christ's witness, and she said yes to that. Therefore, go. Therefore, since you are already going, make disciples. And making disciples begins with relationship. The the impact teams that go on these trips are able to connect with the global church in a way that is simply only possible by actually physically going. And they have the opportunity to be a part of what God is doing in the world and sharing the love of Jesus with those who haven't ever heard it before. How many of you feel like going to the furthest ends of the earth seems a little daunting? Okay, am I the only one? Okay. (laughs) It takes a lot stepping outside your comfort zone in so many ways and raising funds and taking the time off of work and immersing yourself in a culture that's foreign to you, maybe living in conditions that you're not quite used to here. But, I mean, how many of you feel like the idea of being Christ witnesses in Santa Barbara County sounds a little daunting to you? Thank you. Yeah, be honest. It is not an easy task. But what does Jesus say to the disciples right before he tells them to go? He says, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. And in the parallel account in Acts, he says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Let that sink in for a minute. I mean, Thinking about being Christ's witnesses here or overseas, maybe it's not an easy thing. But you're, getting, you're being promised to receive power from the creator of the universe. Maybe reaching out to that friend that needs more than you have to give right now. Or reaching out to that neighbor that you don't really know or don't really like. Maybe that's uncomfortable. Maybe putting yourself out there is nerve-wracking. Maybe traveling to a foreign, unknown country is scary. But the Alpha and the Omega, the I am who I am, the Almighty God is promising to be with you in that. I don't know what God is calling you to this morning, but our mandate from Jesus is clear, is to go and to make disciples. And to make disciples, we have to care about people. And to care about people, we have to know them. And to know them, we have to actually step out and be with them, whether that is next door or across town or across an ocean. And maybe he's nudging you this morning to take a step. Maybe it's calling that church family member that needs an extra friend. Maybe it's inviting that new neighbor over for dinner. Or maybe you're feeling the push to take a step to go to the ends of the earth on a short-term or a long-term missions journey. I don't know what God's calling you to this morning, but I do know that he is calling you. Jesus is already assuming that we're on our way. Therefore, having gone, Christ is calling you and assuming that you are already on your way. So the next step is follow through. Let's pray. God, in the silence of this moment, I pray that you would continue to nudge us, to push on our hearts, to take that step that you are calling us to in making disciples, to care about your people, to be with them. Don't let us leave today without responding to that nudge. And it's in your name we pray. Amen.